Shalom. I'm Messianic Rabbi Zef Porat, and welcome to a special outreach update from Jerusalem, Israel. We're living in exciting and prophetic times. There's never been a generation closer to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua than this generation. We're not setting any dates, but we know that the time is near. We know that the veil is being lifted. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. And Jews in Israel and around the world are being saved like never before. There is a revival in Israel. There is a hunger in Israel. We are just before the Feast of the Lord, the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. A time of blessings. A time for the gospel to go forth like never before. We're preaching the gospel south to north of Israel with many follow-ups. Praise Yeshua. We give him all the glory. We're small people with a big God. The enemy doesn't want people to know that Yeshua is the Messiah. Yeshua is God who died on the tree on the cross for our sins. He rose on the third day and by his blood all who repent and believe have full redemption of sins and eternal life. And in the feast of the Lord, it's all about Yeshua. The Bible says that God is not the author of confusion. Who is the author of confusion? It's Satan. It's the devil. It's the demons. It's the demonic realm. And he will do everything to confuse the people that they won't see Messiah Yeshua. And they won't understand the feasts. And one of the ways he does it in the Feast of Trumpets is by confusing the biblical calendar. By telling the people that it's the new year. That you celebrate the Feast of Trumpets by having a new year. But that has nothing to do with the Bible. That has to do with the Babylonian calendar. That has to do with the Chaldean spirit. When God says something, it stays forever. You are not to add or to subtract from my word. Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 2. Do not add to what I command you and do not subtract from it. But keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, that I give you. So it's clear. God says do not add to his word and do not subtract it. And if the Bible says that the Feast of Trumpets is in the seventh month, then it's in the seventh month, and no man can change it to the beginning of the year. And this is a biblical pattern. Hidgalut, Revelation chapter 22, verse 19. If anyone takes words away from this scroll or prophecy, God will take away from that person any share in the tree of life in the holy city which are described in this scroll. And we know that that holy city is Yerushalayim HaKadasha, the new Jerusalem. And only those under the blood of Yeshua, will enter in. Only those who are born again. The new year, according to the biblical calendar, starts in the season of Pesach, the season of Passover. Because it was in the Passover season that our salvation came. Let's see when the Word of God says is the first day of the year. Exodus chapter 12, verses 2 to 3. This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of the year. Verse 3. Tell the whole community of Israel, that on the tenth day of this month, each man shall take a lamb for his family, one for each household. So we can see over here that this is the Pesach, the Passover season, and this is the first month of the year. It is not the seventh month. So the question is, why do most Jewish people around the world, and unfortunately some believers that have been fooled, celebrate the seventh month as the new year? The answer is in Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice, you heavens, and you who dwell on them. But woe to the earth and the sea, because the devil has gone down to you. He is filled with fury, because he knows that his time is short. Because the enemy knows that his time is short, he is tampering with the biblical calendar. He is tampering with the word of God. But as believers in Yeshua and Jesus, we understand when it says the seventh month of the year, it's the seventh month of the year. When it says the first month of the year, it says the first month of the year. It doesn't matter what man says. It matters what the Word of God says in context. The Feast of Trumpets points to the second coming of Jesus Yeshua. With the sound of the trump, we meet the Lord in the air and go home. And for this reason, the enemy doesn't want people to celebrate the true Feast of Trumpets. And he sidetracks them and takes them to a new year that has nothing to do with the Word of God. Only those who know, who hear the joyful sound will enter into the kingdom. He leave. Psalms 89 verse 15. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your content. Only those who hear the sound of the Lord, only those who follow him are blessed. It has nothing to do with the new year. It has everything to do with the joyful sound. Blessed are those who know the joyful sound. As Jerusalem is blasted with people before the feasts, 
we began to share the gospel, to share the love of Yeshua in the Kotel area. As the Messiah of Israel Ministries team were praying, I began to preach. I noticed a very known rabbi walking with his students in the Kotel area, Harav Yonatan Bilgev, Rabbi Jonathan Berger. I approached the rabbi and asked him, I am Atah Harav Yonatan Bilgev. Are you Rabbi Jonathan Berger? He said yes. I introduced myself and asked him if I can ask him some questions. He was very happy and said, of course. I asked him, we are now getting close to the feast of the Lord, to the feast of trumpets. He said, yes. In Hebrew, it's called Yom HaTuah, mean, Yom means day, Tuah means blowing, the feast of the blowing of trumpets in Hebrew, known to most Jews as Rosh Hashanah, the new year. I asked the rabbi, is number one, one? He said, of course. Is number seven, seven? He said, of course. I said, can seven be one? He said, no. I said, can one be seven? He said, no. His students were all listening as they were getting closer. I said, so why are you calling Yom HaTuah, the day of blowing, the feast of trumpets, the new year? He said, what do you mean? That's when the Jews celebrate the new year. I asked him, is it the feast of the Jews or the feast of the Lord? He said, it's the feast of the Lord, but it's the same thing. I said, is that what the Bible says? He didn't answer. I then asked him a question again. I said, before I open the Bible, I want to make sure that we understand each other. Is number one, one? He said, yes. Is number seven, seven? He said, yes. Is there any place in the Bible where seven became one or one became seven? He said, impossible. I turned the Bible to Leviticus 23, verse 24, and read together with the rabbi. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, in the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall have a Sabbath rest, a memorial of blowing the trumpets, a holy convocation. I then looked at the rabbi, he didn't answer, and I read it again. Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month. So it's clear here that the feast of Yom Atuah, the day of blowing the trumpets, is on the seventh month. It is not on the first month of the year. It has nothing to do with the new year. In fact, the Bible tells us exactly when the new year begins. Exodus 12, verse 2. This month is to be for you the first month, the first month of the year. So it's clear that the first month of the year is not the seventh month. It's in the month of the feast. It's in the season of Passover. Nothing to do with the Feast of Trumpets. I then asked the rabbi, why are you celebrating the new year on the seventh month of the year and not on the first month? The rabbi answered, that's what we learn in the Talmud. I asked the rabbi, which is the Word of God? The Talmud or the Word of God? The Bible, the Tanakh. He said the Tanakh, but the he started to stutter and he said, yeah, but the Talmud interprets the Tanakh. I said, who wrote the Talmud? He said, man, who wrote the Tanakh? The Bible. He said, God. I said, who has more authority, man or God? He said, God. I said, then you've answered yourself. Rosh Hashanah, the new year, has nothing to do with the seventh month. And in fact, we're not to study the Talmud at all. In fact, it's clear we're not supposed to study the Talmud, but study only the word of God. I then asked the rabbi, who is the wisest of all men? He said, Melech Shlomo, King Solomon. I said, is Melech Shlomo smarter than the rabbis who wrote the Talmud? He said, yes. I said, are you sure? He said, absolutely. With this understanding, let's read what the wisest of all men wrote. And you know, we all agree that Kohelet Shlomo, Ecclesiastics, King Solomon wrote under the inspiration of the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. He said, yes. With this understanding, let's read Ecclesiastics 12, verses 12 and 13. Be warned, my son, of anything in addition to them. Of making many books, there is no end. And much study wearies the body. So King Solomon, Melech Shlomo, is actually telling you not to read those books. Let's read the conclusion, verse 13. Now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the duty of all mankind. So we can see right here that because the Jewish people have been fooled by reading the Talmud, they now celebrate the new year on the seventh month. When King Solomon clearly said not to do that. And we both agree that according to the Bible, he was the wisest of all men. The rabbi now was in trouble. His students were there. He didn't know what to say. It was time for the full gospel. In order not to continue to embarrass the rabbi, I moved on to the next subject and asked him, why do you come here before the feast almost every day? He said, I want to hear the shofar. I then told him, the real shofar is the voice of God. He said, amen. But we don't need a hundred blasts, a hundred shofars. That's also invented by man. We need one shofar. And only those who know that shofar know the joyful sound. At that time, one of the rabbi's students asked, 
What is the joyful sound? I turned the Bible to Psalms 89 verse 15 and read together. Blessed is the people that know the joyful sound. They shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy countenance. As you can see, according to the Bible, there's one joyful sound. And the fact that we met here today in the Kotel area before the feast is not a coincidence. It's a divine appointment. God is calling you to that joyful sound. He's calling you to hear his voice forever, not just in the feasts, because he is the feast. At that moment, something supernatural happened. The prayers of the believers were working. The rabbi then asked, how do I hear this joyful sound? This was amazing. One of the main rabbis in Jerusalem is now asking, how do I hear this joyful sound? That is something almost impossible. It's supernatural. Only the Holy Spirit can do that. I turn the Bible to Jeremiah 23, Psalms 22, and Isaiah 53. These Bible verses are speaking about the true joyful sound, the Messiah, Yeshua, who died on the tree on the cross for your sins. He rose on the third day, and by his blood, if you repent and believe, you have full redemption of sins and eternal life, and you not only hear the shofar in the feast, you hear his voice all the time. Hallelujah. The rabbi wanted to leave. Some of his students wanted to leave. He was scared to give me his phone number or to take my phone number. I just gave him my name and I said, you can find me on the internet. Send me an email. But one thing is certain. I pray that this time of the feast, God will talk to you, that you will ask him for the truth because the truth can only do one thing and that is set you free. Don't celebrate the new year at the wrong time but celebrate the new birth through Messiah Yeshua. He turned to me and said, I could have you thrown out of here. I said, you could, but you won't, because you know the truth. He left the Kotel area with his students, and we continued to share the gospel. Let's pray for Rabbi Yonatan Bilyeu, that he'll come to know, that he'll have dreams, that he'll have visitations, that he'll search the scriptures, and he and his students, his family, and his whole synagogue will come to know that Yeshua Jesus is the Messiah. Yeshua is God. And they'll hear the sound of the shofar, which is Jesus Yeshua. One thing is certain, Rabbi Belgiev and all those that heard the gospel will never be the same again. And for this, we give all the glory to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Jesus Yeshua. And for Zion's sake, we will not keep silent. Isaiah 62 verse 1. For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. For Jerusalem's sake, I will not remain quiet till her vindication shines out like the dawn, her salvation like a blazing torch. And we know that the word for salvation in Hebrew is the word Yeshua, Jesus, her Yeshua, like a blazing torch. And he's coming back with fire in his eyes as the lion of the tribe of Judah to take back everything that the enemy has stolen. And until that time, we will continue to preach the gospel no matter what. Until next time, I'm Messianic Rabbi Zeph Porat sending you blessings from Israel in the mighty name of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Al Yehuda, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Great I Am, Jesus Yeshua, Amen. Every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua, Jesus, is God. Hallelujah, Amen. Blessed are those who know the joyful sound.